Well, hello there, Retro PC Durham. It's Chris here. We've got another laptop, this Dell Latitude, another E6400 series machine, a Core 2 Duo based system. We'll take a look at it. It's in okay shape, a little bit of nicks and scratches and stuff on the top here, but the, the top of the case is in reasonable, reasonable condition. Uh, we look on the back of the system here, we've got our ethernet port. There is a blank here where I guess there could have been a modem port. So I guess showing how long this, this particular form factor was in use for. Power and display port outs. Then when we go on this side here, we've got a smart card reader. So this machine may have been actually a business model to have that smart card reader actually included. Exhaust for our fans for cooling the system internally. We've got an eSATA port, USB port, VGA port. So we've got two different types of video output. Front end of the system, we've got an SD card slot and then our release for the LCD panel. And then we come around to the final side, we've got our optical drive. There's a DVD, ROM and CD burner, an express card slot, a micro IEEE 1394 Firewire connection, a Wi-Fi toggle, audio ports and two more USB ports. So a reasonable amount of connectivity for this system. Keyboard's in decent shape. You will notice something a little non-Dell here, and that is the fact that the track point nub here that I had to include on here when I got this machine donated, it didn't have the standard blue or black nub that Dell would have included. So I had a, a ThinkPad nubs here that I've got lots of spares for that I put on there, and it, it, fit, it fit okay enough. And then we've got our little tiny touchpad to go here as well. Keyboard is in decent shape. It's, you know, reasonably comfortable to type on. And then we've got our standard screen as well. Uh, this machine doesn't have a camera built into it. So that's definitely something that's a little bit of a, a lacking piece um, that a lot of people who want to get laptops uh, for e-learning and stuff right now, but it's not terribly difficult to find a camera for uh, one of these machines that you can just, you know, kind of clip on top. So let's get things flipped around here and start up the machine. Take a look at specs. All right, Windows 10 has finished loading up. We have hardware info running here to show off our specs of this machine. Processor, we've got an Intel Core 2 Duo P8400. That's a dual core, non-hyper-threaded processor, the Penryn class. And our speed goes about 2.2 to 2.4 gigahertz on that machine, which is okay, does a decent job. Storage wise, we've got that 320 gig SATA hard drive. And then we've got that optical combo drive as well. We also have a discrete graphics card on this an NVIDIA Quadro NVS 160M with 256 megabytes of RAM, which is pretty good to have because from a memory perspective, I could not get more than three gig of RAM installed on this machine. Uh, it would boot with a single one gig DIMM, a single two gig DIMM, a pair of one gig DIMMs, but not a pair of two gig DIMMs or a four gig DIMM. So I had to go a two and a one together for three total and it's DDR2 memory. So it's a little bit slow on this machine as well, but it works and that's really what's important. One of the other things I ran into as an issue with this machine was the fact that it came with a supervisor password. And the guy that donated this uh, machine, which was uh, John from Ajax, who donated a couple of laptops to me, uh, he didn't have the information for that either. So uh, I did have the ability to use a tool online, which I will include in the description for this video as well that you can use, which works on a bunch of different laptops, a bunch of HP Compact, Dell, Acer machines. Uh, you type in like the serial number or the serial code for the machine, the BIOS, and it will give you like a master password that you can use to unlock the supervisor or master passwords. Uh, and it worked for this machine. I was able to remove the supervisor password and unlock all of the other features to be able to unlock network boot so I could install uh, the OS on this remotely without having to use a USB key and it and disable the uh, Compu um, trace stuff so that there's no like lockouts of the machine in the future uh, for whoever ends up using it. So a little bit helpful. I'll include that in the link below and uh, hopefully you can get some help with that in the future as well. All right, let's take a look and see how this thing handles YouTube. Now this screen's got a 1280 by 800 resolution. So our viewport here is 1280 by 720, but I have originally set here for 1080p. Let's see how it handles itself. So the first thing I'll notice is um, there's a bit of an audio glitch that I've experienced on another Dell Latitude, uh, I think another E6400 as well. So it must be something to do with the sound 
driver for Windows 10 running on this system that it's kind of weird, and I've never had that happen on another laptop. Um, as far as performance goes, I'm not seeing too much in terms of hitching, um, but dropped frames, we're, you know, a little low. So if we drop down to 720p, oh yeah, look at that. Okay, now it's not happy. So now we're at 720p, native resolution. Frame drops look like they're a little tiny bit better. The audio hitching is still happening, but it looks like the system is able to handle the video pretty well. The speakers are a little tinny as well, so that kind of doesn't help the experience, but this works. Dropping down to 480p would probably yield the best performance result, but I don't think it would resolve the audio issues. But overall, I mean, it works, and that's really what we're trying to achieve here. So there's another system ready to go. Hope you enjoyed checking out this Dell Latitude E6400 with me. As always, I hope you're staying safe and healthy, and we'll catch you in the next one.